just like we would normally expect to find a way to route the mod wheel to different parameters inside of a synthesizer, we also usually have a very easy way to route common expressions like velocity and also aftertouch, which we saw in the MIDI uh, modulator as well. But inside of Bitwig Studio, you're going to find this with the expressions modulator, which will appear under the control subheading. So with note inputs, this is very easy to set up. I really don't have to spend a lot of time with it. Once you know what these different things do, you're pretty much going to be good to go here. So you can see that by default inside of the polysynth, we do have one uh, location where we can route velocity without needing to use the expressions, and that would be to volume. So right now, regardless of how loud or how soft I hit the key, how hard or how light I'm pressing it down, the volume is exactly the same. As I increase velocity here, that's going to change. So now when I hit the key very softly, the sound that outputs is quite quiet. When I slam the key, it's much louder. And this is just going to set that range for you here. Conversely, we could do the exact same thing using the expressions control. We could take velocity, route that to output when I hit the key softly versus loud. And everywhere in between now would it make sense to actually set it up that way no i just figured i'd show you the visual feedback you should probably just use what's built in here for you but we can then route velocity to other things besides just the volume so we could go to oscillator sync maybe add a little bit of sub change the sub pulse width adjust the shape maybe move this back the other way uh, change that ever so slightly and so now as i'm hitting the key at different uh, pressure levels or i should say velocity levels We get all sorts of variations and I can go ahead and just record something in. Cool. All right. And now when we go in and we look at this, I have the ability to bring up my different expression controls by clicking this little icon down here. When I go to velocity, we see there's some variation, but not a whole lot. So what I like to do is go in, go into our histogram here, bring the mean down a little bit increase the spread, add a little bit of chaos, increase the spread even further, bring it back down. And then if I need to, I can go in and sort of adjust some things manually. There's not enough chaos on these guys. Let's go back and add some chaos, increase the spread. It's not doing the greatest job in the world here, is it? And now when we go back and listen, We're getting all sorts of variation there. The uh, next expression control is actually pretty rare, which is release velocity. There are some MIDI keyboards that when you actually release the key, it's able to determine uh, sort of how hard or how soft you're releasing the key. Uh, I've never had a MIDI keyboard like that, and I've never really even found a program that records it. However, it can be useful because let's say, for example, that we want to just sort of randomize that. It's going to be easy for us to do that. So I'm going to take the release velocity, and I'm going to have that act on the filter oscillator FM and also on the drive control here on the wave shaper. All right, maybe also have it move the filter frequency, increase the resonance a little bit. And so now what I can do is I can go back in here and I'm going to select all of these notes again. And down here, you see we have an option for release velocity. It hasn't recorded anything in as of now, but I can take all of these guys and bring them to 50%. And then what I would go in and do is I would add a ton of chaos, add, oops, I wanted to add more spread than that, add a bunch of spread, and then maybe just bring the mean. Uh, it's a little bit too much, isn't it? Let's see if we can get something a little bit better. There we go. We'll do something like that. And now when we go and listen, we're going to get some variation as well. Sounds a little bit crazy. Let's try and try to bring this up. So that's kind of cool. And what I may end up doing then is bringing down the mean here. Sound a little too out of control. And I can always then go back in and reduce the range on some of these things. Mm 
Nice. So that would be one application there of the release velocity. So that is something you can adjust. I'm not sure if you can really go in and see it, but I can click on each individual note and see the release velocities that are coming out and you can see how it differs from the regular velocity going in. Okay, the next thing we have is Tamper. Again, this one is pretty unique to Bitwig. In fact, it's as far as I know, completely unique to Bitwig. And you access this by going down in here to the Tamper. And this one really works on more of like a gliding principle. So what I'll do is I'll go in here and I'm going to bring on some kind of an effect. I don't know what effect I want at this point. I should have thought about this a little bit more before recording. Let's just go and grab, there's already a lot of distortion, isn't there? Oh man, I don't know. Um, pitch shifter or should I use the frequency shifter? Let's go with the frequency shifter for now and just take a quick listen to how this is sounding. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have timbre controlling mix, left, right balance, and we'll even increase the range. So it's going to sound maybe not all that usable, but that's fine. And I could go in here and I could randomize these positions. But as far as I know, it's not really going to make a big difference to the sound. You can see nothing is moving in here, even though it is routed. And what we actually have to do, and there are some controllers that kind of give you the ability to glide with your finger on the key. That's usually what's routed to timbre. But what I would do is actually set up some glides here. And this is where we're going to get the movement happening. And so again, I'm just kind of going in here at random and moving things around. So let's try this out. Let's get some extremes. Something like that. And now we can take a listen. So as you can see, I don't really know how to get a lot of use out of timbre. Eh, it's doing something. You might have more success with that one than me. And then the last one is, of course, just your pressure. So this is going to be the aftertouch. So I could bring that on and let's have that control the resonance here. Maybe a little bit of this. All right. So now when I hit a key. When it comes to using the expressions on more of an audio source, you have to go through a couple of workarounds in order to set this up, but it is totally possible and I'll show you how you would do that. So here's the pad that we have working. And what I wanna do is I wanna have velocity routed to probably both mix and then also to this frequency. Perhaps we'll use something else to control the frequency, something that's a little more sweeping in motion. And uh, I can go in here, begin by bringing on the expressions. And we do have all ins turned on. So in theory, if I go and I take the velocity and I have that controlling the mix, and maybe we'll also have that control rate a little bit. We will see that as this is playing back, and I have gone in and converted this into a hybrid track, that's the first thing you need to make sure that you do. Uh, that way you can have all ins coming here from your MIDI keyboards, which we did set up before. But now what I can do is I can play this and I can hit different velocity levels. You can hear what that does, but there is a little bit of an issue to this, and that is how do I record this result and how do I control it? I could always create a new audio track and sort of like, you know, record in real time the results of this, but that's not going to give me a whole lot of control. What I actually need to do is create an instrument track here. And from this instrument track, this is going to be the notes that I actually go and record in. And then what I need to make sure I do is just on this hybrid track, have some kind of a note input. which I thought that was the name of the device. Maybe it isn't. It's called note something or other. Let's see. 
note receiver. That's the thing I'm looking for. So I grab the note receiver and the source I want is going to be from instrument three. All right. So now when I record onto instrument three, it's going to bring that note in here. All right. And then it will get that result and we could group these together. Obviously, I don't need an instrument on here. I just need something that's going to respond to velocity sensitivity, which those notes will record. And I could also then maybe take the pressure and uh, put that onto the frequency here. And uh, yeah, let's just kind of try this out. This isn't really going to be the greatest example in the world, but that's fine. So we'll set on record. And now when I play this back through, I could even go in and I could edit the results there. So sometimes with the pressure and actually the pressure is still going to show up down here. Um, the pressure was kind of getting the thing that was out of control, but I could also go in and adjust the velocity. I just have this cut back down at the end. Something like that. So if you have a lot more control over the way that you play things in and you're not as like fat fingered as I am, you may actually be able to come up with some really cool results this way. And uh, yeah, so that's the way that you would set it up working with the expressions on a hybrid track. Check it out.